As exciting as it is to see all of the immense progress happening in open source LLM development, one of the biggest problems that's only getting harder is how we actually understand which is the best, specifically in math or coding or long form writing, and in some cases just in a general sense. This helps us understand if these open models are actually better or equivalent to closed source models like GPT-4 Omni and Cloud 3.5. But more importantly, these benchmarks help us understand how to make better models and understand where the entire industry is going. And you might think that the process of benchmarking is pretty simple. For instance, if you're benchmarking video games, you basically just run the same path through a virtual environment and see how a system performs or see how an aimbot performs. And what's interesting is testing LLMs isn't just about testing software. You're not just trying to see where they work well and when they break, you're trying to gauge more of a relative set of skills. Hugging Face has been the epicenter for open large language models and today they released a second version of their very famous open LLM leaderboard. There's so much information contained within these models that a lot of time Having a well-rounded set of tests that actually gives you a general idea of what they're capable of actually has to be done with an average of a number of different benchmarks. And more importantly, doing this is really expensive because you're having to run inference on thousands or hundreds of thousands of prompts to get all this done. Curiously, this problem has gotten so hard that there are actually entire startups coming out of Y Combinator now that only offer private paid benchmarking for open source and closed source models. And the problem that they're attacking isn't the fact that people can't afford to actually run benchmarks on their GPUs. It's the fact that we're actually finding a lot of models are actually speed running the prompts that are used in these benchmarks or are trying to infer what they are in order to juice their scores so that they get more attention and more kind of use when they're released. And we've seen examples like from Jan Peleg of actually creating models that just explicitly try to get the highest score and what's kind of cool is you can brute force these benchmarks, but in theory, eventually, we'd like to see them get to the point where in theory, you couldn't actually brute force them. But with time, that's always happening, which also means that we have to be continuously running these benchmarks to have an up-to-date idea of what's going on. Now, previously, one of the best places to do this for open source LLMs was the open LLM leaderboard hosted by Hugging Face. And curiously, one of the bigger things that Hugging Face innovated in before being kind of the GitHub of open source large language models was benchmarks. Hugging Face in some sense is just kind of an interface to use GPUs in a number of places really easily. And it's part of why they're so successful. And what they released today is awesome. So what Hugging Face released today is Open LLM Leaderboard 2, which is kind of the next generation of their leaderboards that rank the performance and capability in a general sense of open source large language models. So is this leaderboard actually better than a number of other kind of aggregators? What does this mean for the future of Hugging Face and open source LLMs? And are their new findings actually accurate? And who's actually at the top of this new leaderboard? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So this was announced by a number of developers who work at Hugging Face or on Hugging Face infrastructure on Twitter yesterday. And I think the findings are really quite interesting. The idea of this, as Philip Schmidt says here, is evaluating LLMs isn't easy. Finding new ways to compare LLMs fairly, transparently, and reproducibly is important. And reproducibility is really the most important factor here. And it's not just kind of a tenant of good science, but it's a tenant of how accurate and how honest the creators of a number of these LLMs actually are. For instance, we've known that with the Microsoft Phi models, generally speaking, their initial performance claims generally go down quite a bit after, you know, the first few days of actual benchmarking. So obviously, Philip says here, benchmarks are not perfect, but they give us a first understanding of how well models perform and where their strengths are. And that's what I try to do with this channel. Obviously, I can't show you thousands of examples but when I show benchmarks or I show myself interacting with them, I'm showing a very narrow slice of things that I think professional software engineers and kind of power users of these models would like to see. Obviously the things that are going to impress my viewers if you're watching this video are pretty different than you know your friend who's never seen ChatGPT before. So what's actually new in this leaderboard? It includes MMLU Pro, which is kind of an incremental improvement of MMLU, GPQA and USR, Math, IF Eval, and BBH. There's still a limited number of benchmarks actually being used here. They've also improved ranking with normalized scores adjusting to a standardized baseline, which is kind of just some statistical improvement, but this is important to understand the difference between models and having a better understanding of how 
relative performance increases, which I still think is more interesting than like just the absolute score on a leaderboard. There is a much faster and simpler interface with a new Gradio component. So it's still cool to see Gradio making huge contributions to this community. There is an enhanced reproducibility with support for Delta weights and chat templates, which is pretty cool. And this was actually a really big um, blind spot in the previous version of this leaderboard where a lot of times there was no way to say, well, are you, are you using kind of the chat interface or the instruct interface? And making this possible means that the numbers we're getting are just far more accurate and represent what most people are actually going to see when interacting with these models. They've also introduced this kind of maintainer's highlight and a community voting system, which I think is another important way to show some context in these leaderboards that otherwise you can't get. I mean, for instance, we used to see really good scores of models that were actually not that useful to many people. And hopefully this helps tamp down the practice of creating models that are only meant to score well, but aren't actually very useful to an end user. So let's actually look at this leaderboard and I'm going to get into why Quen 272B Instruct and Metalama 3B 70B Instruct are kind of neck and neck with Cohere at the very top of this new leaderboard. This is actually still pretty similar to the previous leaderboard. You can filter by a number of columns that represent their own benchmark. You can filter with queries based on model types, if they're pre-trained, base merges or morges, and a number of other attributes. But what's cool here is Quen 272B Instruct is in fact at the very top of this leaderboard, followed by Quen 270B, Meta Llama 370B Instruct, and a number of others. So one thing that I think is cool here is we would expect instruct models to be kind of way out front. This may have to do with the fact that now you can actually consider the scores done with a chat template on uh, this new leaderboard, but I do like this. And to be frank, it's actually relatively identical to the previous leaderboard, but I think the statistical improvements and the voting attributes that are now included will make this much more meaningful both to power users and people who are just getting started trying to understand which models they want to run locally. Now there's a question of how this information was actually produced. And this is kind of an underrated challenge with benchmarks that I think people just don't recognize enough. And that's just how much raw GPU time goes into benchmarking a lot of these models. And I do think it's important to, that when you benchmark these, you kind of have to run it all on the same GPUs because obviously if you're running it on different ones, the performance could be slightly different. And in theory, the results, you know, tokens in, tokens out will probably be the same. But if you're not kind of making sure you have the same amount of VRAM, there would be variance. So what's cool is in theory, this entire leaderboard is run on the same GPUs, not kind of a cherry picked config that the producers of the LLM decided to run it on. So basically the co-founder and CEO of Hugging Face had this to say about their testing methodology. So he said, we're pumped to announce the brand new LLM leaderboard. We burned 300 H100 hours to rerun new evaluations like MMLU Pro for all major open LLMs. And these were their biggest takeaways. So the biggest takeaways are basically that again, Quen 72 b is the king and Chinese open models are completely dominating, which we hope to see some new stuff coming from Meta soon. But this is a really interesting finding that probably isn't surprising to most of you who watch my videos. Previous evaluations have been too easy for recent models, much like grading high school students on their middle school problems. And they hope to improve this in the near future. There are indications that AI builders have started to focus on the main evaluations too much at the expense of model performances on other ones. The other biggest takeaway here is Phi 3 has scored much better than we actually thought. So bigger models aren't necessarily always better. But again, the top 10 spots are clearly dominated by transformer-based models. So clearly the field of benchmarking in open LLMs is improving rapidly. I do hope to see more Mistral models here. I was kind of curious to not see those in like the top 20 slots, but we'll have to see what Hugging Face does going forward. So I'm curious, uh, are there certain models that you would hope to see in this leaderboard? Do you think there are certain decisions Hugging Face made that you would disagree with? Maybe some that you really support? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our videos, please like, subscribe, and share as it helps us out a ton. And we'll see you in the next one.